everybody. Today we're going to be starting Pre-Calculus 11, Chapter 2, um, and this is going to be trigonometry. Let's look at some of the big ideas. Uh, at the end of the unit, we'll be able to understand angles in a circle and how they can be expressed in a variety of ways. We're going to look at the three primary trig ratios that we did last year in Math uh, 10, sine, cosine, and tangent. And we're going to look at the Pythagorean Theorem, um, how they relate to the right angle triangles, and um, where we use sine and cos now um, to solve using those triangles. Each primary trig, uh, trig ratio is positive in two quadrants and negative in two quadrants between 0 and 360. This is called the cash rule. We're going to learn about these. Um, special triangles are used for, for determining exact values of trigonometric ratios with reference angles 0, 30, 45, and 60. So we'll touch on these a little bit um, in Pre-Cal 11 and continue on in math in Pre-Cal 12 with these as well. Alright, so the first section is 2 decimal 1 angles in standard position. Um, so let's do a quick review of what we learned um, trigonometry so far. So Pythagorean theorem, or the Pythagorean relationship. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Remember, C um, is the hypotenuse that's directly across from the right angle, and your two legs, um, A and B, um, they are adjacent to your right angle. Okay, so they can be interchanged in the A and B. It doesn't make a difference, but your hypotenuse is always right, right across from your right angle, and A and B are adjacent to your right angle. Okay, so you recall the primary trig ratios we learned from last year. So if theta was down here in the bottom right, and we have our right angle here in the same location as up above, the opposite would be opposite of the uh, angle theta, the unknown angle adjacent, as you can see there is attached, and the hypotenuse never changes. Right? So your adjacent and your opposite can change. It depends on where your reference angle is. So sine theta is equal to the opposite of hypotenuse, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right? So let's solve the following triangles. Um, get around the sides to the nearest tenth and angles to the nearest degree. So you did these in math 10. So in the first one, they give you the um, angle 37. So we, and for angle A, so you'll notice that I've labeled my triangle ABC. And with the uppercase uh, letters and our capital letters and lowercase for your sides. That's uh, something that's pretty standard when we're doing that. Um, I just picked A, B, and C. You can pick any letter you wish, but um, normally if we have a triangle, we use A, B, and C on this otherwise directed. So you'll notice that I've um, labeled all my sides because there's six measures here. There's three angles and three sides. They gave us two angles and one side. So right away we can figure out what angle C is. We know that the three angles have to add up to 180, or we know that two angles that not including the 90 degree have to add up to 90. So what I did was I took my 90 degrees, I subtracted 37, and got 53. So angle C is 53. Now to find the sides A and C, I use the primary trig ratio. So for the first one I'm going to use cos of A which is 37, equal to, so if we're using 37, and it's cosine, we need the adjacent side, which would be C, over the hypotenuse, which would be B. So cos A is equal to C over B. Again, you did this last year. This is just a refresh. So entering the information, you know, 37 degrees equals C over 13. And um, then we rearrange, so we multiply the both by that denominator of 13, the opposite of dividing, and we get C is equal to 13 cos 37, and that equals 10 decimal 4. So if you plug that in your calculator and you don't get 10 decimal 4, that's because you need your calculator in degrees. You can have your calculator in radians or degrees. It must be in degrees. This is what was talked about last year as well in Math 10. Um, we don't use radians until grade uh, to pre 12. So right now we're using the degree mode as our function. We have to make sure it's in degrees. And then I do the same for the uh, finding side A unknown. So the sine of A is equal to A over 
B because we're using 37 for angle A, so the opposite over hypotenuse would be A over B, so sine A is equal to A over B. Plug in what we know, 37 equals A over 13. You don't need to use your original uh, measures, but it's uh, always a good idea to do so in case you make a mistake calculating uh, one of your other angles. Again, you can use them. It doesn't make a difference. I've done that in the next example just to show you it would work as well. But uh, I try to use the angles given if possible. So multiply both sides by 13. We have 13 sine 37, and that is equal to 7 decimal 8. And then we put our centimeters in, and it's, uh, it's said to the nearest degree. Um, for your angles and the nearest tenth for your measures. So these are to the nearest tenth, one place after the decimal. And we didn't calculate any angles except for the first one, but that was obvious. No decimal there to begin with. So let's look at example B. So you're going to label your triangle. I did A, B, C again, uh, the same orientation. Um, B, uh, lower, the lowercase b is across from um, the 90 degree angle. It always is, and it's across from uppercase b, obviously. That's important. They gave us the degree at 24 degrees, and they gave us the side opposite that, uh, so it's lower C at 5 centimeters. So we need to calculate angle A, angle B, or oh, sorry, angle A and side B and side A. Angle B is obviously 90 degrees. So I just had to fix a little typo there, just said N A, and it should have been C, my apologies. Um, so we're going to calculate uh, side B, the hypotenuse this time. We have sine of C is equal to uh, the opposite C over the hypotenuse B. So we plug in 24 for angle C. Plug in 5 centimeters or 5 for C. We solve for B. So we rearrange this. We get B is equal to 5 divided by the sine of 24 degrees. And we get our B value of 8 to 12 decimal 3 centimeters. Do the same for cos. Cos C is equal to, this time it's the adjacent side, which would be uh, lower A over the hypotenuse, still B. Um, this time I'm going to use the hypotenuse. Um, again, you could have used tangent here if you wanted to, because you move both sides. There's a couple of different approaches you can go to here for solving for A, um, but it's, again, it doesn't make a difference. So I just use sine and cos again. I could have used tan. It doesn't make a difference, like I said. Um, Put in 24 for C, A, and then we use the value we calculated here for B. If you didn't want to do that, you want to use A and C, you just use TAM, like I mentioned. So we multiply both sides by 12 decimal 3, and we get 12 decimal 3 cos sine 24. Um, it's really important that you put the measurement in front of cos, because if not, if you forget to close your bracket on your 24, when you punch in your calculator, you will get the wrong answer. So I'll show you what I mean by that on a, on a graphic calculator. So it's just you just have to be careful when you're punching that in, right? Um, so if we look back, it was 12 decimal 3 cos 24. So what a lot of people will do is they'll uh, put it as cos 24, and then they'll hit multiply by 12 decimal 3, close the bracket, or not even touch the bracket, and then he'll enter, and they get the 0 decimal 4, which really doesn't make any sense. That's because after you take the cos of the angle, the brackets must be closed, and then you can hit divide by 12 decimal 3, and then you get the 11 decimal 3. But I always just put the, the side in front, then the cosine of the angle, and close the bracket. Oh, it's automatically close, close for me. And then I hit enter, and I'll get the 11 decimal 3, right? So just got to be careful of your order of operations and your cos. Um, a lot of people make this mistake with the cos, and so just be mindful of that. All right? So we'll bring our sheet back up under the next example. Uh, now we're on page four. It says, note to calculate the, angle, uh, the value of an angle, use the second function and then sine, cos, or tan. I'll show you how to do that on the calculator again, just uh, as a reminder. So now we're going to look for an unknown angle when we're given two sides. So example says, find the missing angle in each scenario, round answers to the nearest degree. So in the first one, we are looking for, uh, we have a diagram this time. Um, so we have we're looking for theta, and we have the opposite and the adjacent side. So we know we need to use tan. Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is 11. The adjacent side is 7. So we take right now when you're trying to find the angle, you do the inverse of that, 
or you'll sometimes hear it as the arc tan if you're looking at videos online. So the inverse tan or the arc tan. And I'll show you how to do that on the calculator to make sure you get the um, correct angle there. Um, I guess that could have been 58. I, I, I messed up on the rounding there, so I'll fix that online. Okay. Um, so you hit your second function button, and that'll give you tan minus 1, which is the inverse tan, right? Um, it's just like taking the square root and squaring. See how they're the same like, function here? They're right in the same button. That's why we do second function. That's the same idea with the tan and the inverse tan button. And then we just put 11 divided by 7. You can get the decimal now, but you didn't, there's no need. Just put it in as the two sides. And you get 57 decimal 5, which I should have round to 58. I'll fix that. That should be 58. We'll fix that later. And the next one, it already just gives you, there's no diagram. It just tells you that the sine of B is equal to 0 decimal 3, 8. So to get the uh, beta, we just do the inverse sine of decimal 3, 8, or 0 decimal 3, 8, the same thing. And we get the angle to be 22 decimal 3, 3, 3, 6, which is be 22 degrees. That's okay. Okay. I'll fix that 58 and the 57 doesn't make a difference. It's just a rounding error. Um, and then this example is to be the last one in this video. It says write the three primary trig ratios exact values. So exact values are going to be your um, no decimals. Okay, so right now we know that we have five and nine. We're looking for beta, so we need the opposite. So what I did was I used the Pythagorean theorem in order to calculate that. So it's going to be 9 squared is equal to 5 squared plus uh, O. I just put O as in the opposite, right? Hypotenuse adjacent opposite. So the adjacent side, the beta was 5. The opposite was uh, what we're looking for. 9 squared is 81. 5 squared is 25. Subtract 25 from both sides. We get 56. Take the square root of 56, um, which you can't do easily. So then we do what we learned in the last unit when we did... Um, Oh, well, we did it in grade 10 as well, but changing this entire radical into a mixed radical. So uh, the two factors are 4 and 14. 4 is the uh, greatest perfect square factor. So our side O is 2 square root 14. And we leave it like that. Okay? That's an exact value. No decimals. So we go, we find our three ratios. Sine beta is equal to opposite, which we just calculated, 2 root 14 over hypotenuse, which is 9. That's it. It's done. It's all we want to show what the ratio is. And if we needed to calculate B, we would. It would be the same for all, all of them. Um, cos would be adjacent over hypotenuse. We had those two sides, those so five ninths. Leave it. And then we have tan beta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And the opposite we calculated to be 2 root 14 over 5. Just a note. Remember when you, um, if they wanted to calculate exact values and you ended up with a denominator that had the radical sign, you would rationalize the denominator, like we did in Chapter 5. You'd have to look back if you're not sure of that. When we get to one, I will do it with you, but uh, recall that if that's the case. But here we just have a um, a whole number in our denominator, so we would, right? We have an actual number. That'll be it for the first video. In the next video, we're going to look at angles in standard position talk about some of the quadrants and whatnot. So we'll see you back in the next video for part B of 5.1.